Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I talk about uh, this, the earth is movement. The first video we talk about uh, the earth is your rotation. So in this video, we talk about uh, earth is revolution. So basically the process of revolution is what we will start with. Uh, what is revolution? A uh, revolution of the earth is the circling of the earth around the around the sun. So it is kind of a mistake there on its own clear path. So when the earth is surrounding the sun on its own clear path, that is known as orbit. That we call the revolution of the earth. Now the earth's revolution around the sun takes a year at the average speed of about uh, 29.6 kilometers per second. And uh, there are two phases that occur during this process, the Earth's revolution. The first one is the aphelion. Aphelion, uh, this is the, the type of revolution, the time of revolution, whereby the Earth is much further away from the Sun. So basically, the Earth is at aphelion each year on the 4th July, when it is at the maximum distance of 152 million kilometers from the sun. Uh, you see the peripherion. Uh, peripherion, this is the time of the revolution whereby the earth is much closer to the sun. So at this phase, it is experienced that the earth is much closer or near to the sun. So the earth the Earth is at the peripherion each year on the 3rd January, when it is at the maximum distance of 147 million kilometers. Moving on, we see the results of the Earth's revolution around the Sun. The first result that is caused by this revolution are the four seasons of the year, namely the summer, autumn, uh, winter and spring. So a season basically is one of the distinct periods into which the year may be divided, may be divided. So uh, these seasons can be experienced roughly uh, and differently in the various phases of the Earth due to the Earth's revolution. The second desert is the, the eclipses, the ellipses. Uh, when we talk about the ellipses here, yeah, meaning the ellipse of the sun and the ellipse of the moon. So what's the ellipse? Uh, basically, ellipse refers to the partial or complete obscuring of one celestial or heavenly body by another. And the ellipse occurs when one celestial body moves in between another heavenly body and its source of light, that is the sun. And it normally occurs when the sun or the moon is obscured from the view for a short period. This means that uh, an ellipse will only occur when the moon, the sun, and the earth are in a straight or nearly a straight line. So as the earth revolves around the, the moon, as the, earth around, as the earth revolves around the sun, also the moon revolves around the earth. So there comes a time when the moon and the earth are, are in a straight line. As a result, an ellipse of the moon known as the lunar eclipse or the sun, known as the solar eclipse occurs, depending on which body uh, the Earth or the Moon causes an obstruction. Now if it's clear about the ellipse, let's see uh, more on the, these types of ellipses. Uh, there are two basic areas of already said that it is the solar ellipse and the, the lunar ellipse. Starting with the lunar ellipse, this is an ellipse that occurs when the earth passes between the moon and the sun and the earth's shadow falls on the moon. So the shadow can be experienced or can be seen on the moon. So that's how lunar ellipse is seen. While the solar ellipse occurs when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, thus casting its shadow on the earth. So in this type of ellipse, the moon fully or partially blocks the sun leading to total partial ellipse, respectively. Let's see the latitudes and the longitudes. Latitudes, also known as the parallels, uh, refer to the angular distance north or south of the equator, calibrated in degrees, minutes, and seconds, measured from the center of the Earth. 
Now the equator is given a value of zero degrees. It's an imaginary line which divides the earth into two hemispheres, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. All other latitudes are drawn north or south parallel to the equator. So the following is just a list of some of the important latitudes in their location. Uh, the North Pole is found on the 90, 90 degrees north, Arctic Circle, 66 a half degrees north, uh, Tropic of Cancer, 23 a half north equator, on zero degrees in the uh, Tropic of Capricorn, 23 a half south, Arctic Circle, 66 a half south, and the last one is South Pole, that is 90 degrees south. So those are the important latitudes and their location. We see the longitudes, also known as the meridians. Uh, the longitude is an imaginary line drawn on the map from the North Pole to the South Pole. Uh, the meridians are numbered in degrees east or west of the longitude. That is the degrees called the Greenwich Meridian because it passes through a town in England called the Greenwich. So it is also known as the Prime Meridian because uh, it is the line of the reference from which all other meridians are established or are formed. So all the lines of the longitudes are equal in length and you divide the earth into two equal semi cycles. You see the great cycle. Uh, the great cycle is an zenith cycle that is circumnavigates the earth and it passes through the center of the earth. Uh, the grid cycle is divided into two halves. Thus, the equator is the only latitude that is the, a grid cycle, since it divides the earth into two equal halves, and the, all the lines of the longitudes are the grid cycles. Let's see the importance of the grid cycles. Uh, basically, these grid cycles are used in plotting routes for the ships crossing large stretches of the ocean water and the aircraft flying great distances in a space. So since the shortest distance between the two points on the earth lies along a great cycle passing through the two points, uh, then captains and the pilots of the ships and the aircraft respectively travel by following these great cycles in order to save fuel and the time because by following the great cycle, they travel the shortest possible distance to reach their destinations. You see the importance of the parallels and the meridians. First one is that they used by pilots and the sailors to guide their paths as they steer the planes and the ships. So basically, uh, they are used without these, uh, the trans transferring or the moving from one place to another by water or air could be very difficult. Uh, longitude and the light to uh, when both used together, I uh, used to define a specific location with the geographical coordinates. See the second importance. Uh, each location on the earth has its unique attitude and longitude. So basically, they are used to locate places as the geographical coordinates. The third one is that the longitude is a number of graphers to calculate the local time of a place by their calibrated. The, uh, degrees in a specific amount of uh, minutes and seconds. So the other one is that the light is also used to guide uh, to explain the variation in the climate of the surface of the earth. Uh, example, it is generally known that the places along the equatorial belt experience a hot and a weight and a wet climate for most of the year. As the while you move are not the size of the equator, the climate progressively become cold. Whereby the places that the north and south poles are extremely cold and they are covered by ice and snow throughout the year. So basically, that should help to explain the variation in the climate of the surface of the earth. Let's see the international day train. What is the international day train? Uh, international day train, this is the line where date is changed or where the calendar day begins. Uh, so this line roughly follows the 180 degrees median east or west of the Greenwich. Uh, when you cross the international day train from the east to west, you 
you lose a day, and if you cross the line from the west to east, east you gain a day. So, for example, if you at a game which it is known on Tuesday, uh, a place 90 degrees west would be 6 a.m. on the Tuesday. At a place 180 degrees west, it will be midnight on Monday. On the other end, a place 90 degrees east would be 6 degrees p.m. on the Tuesday, and at a place 180 degrees east, it would be midnight on the Tuesday. So basically, that's how it works when you're crossing the international day train. Uh, so the international day train passes through the mid Pacific Ocean and roughly follows a 180 degrees longitude. Uh, it is located halfway around the world from the Prime Meridian, that is zero degrees of two. It's a beach in Greenwich, England. Now the line can be observed it as a zigzag at some points to enable all parts of the country to keep the same date. So if the line was to cross the country, Iceland or groups of Iceland belonging to the same country, uh, then the, that country would be recorded two different dates on the same day. Now this problem was avoided by elevating the line at some points. So that's how that's why it's like zigzag in some places. Hope it's clear, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.